Hi, I'm Ann Campbell, and today I'm going to talk about the major features in SonarCube 9.4. In the last few versions, we've made a significant effort to add IAC rules for AWS and Azure Cloud. Today, when 9.4, we round out the offering by adding 17 Terraform rules for Google Cloud Platform. Most of these rules are security hotspots, and as a reminder, a security hotspot is a place in code where there might be a vulnerability, there might not. Human review is required to determine. So here is an example of a G GCP security hotspot where we're creating a custom role, and a human reviewer needs to come and look and see if there is a vulnerability here or if it's just fine. Now, Sometimes, with security hotspots, um, it takes a little bit more context than just the location in code to understand whether or not there's a problem. So in 9.4, we've reworked the security hotspots interface to make room to provide secondary locations. So here we see the new 9.4 security hotspots interface. We're raising the hotspot on line 3, where we say make sure it's safe to give all members full access in the creation of this role. But you may not know enough from just line 3 to know whether or not there's a problem here. So we've added secondary locations, and in this case, the secondary location shows where that policy, where that role is being used. So with this additional data, you should be better able to make the determination whether or not there's a problem there. In addition, we've realized that with these infrastructure-related hotspots, it's not always possible to make the change immediately. Sometimes what you need to do is review it, say, yes, there's a problem, I'm going to come back to this, and then move on to review the rest of your hotspots and get your code to a releasable state. So to do that, we've added this acknowledged feature. This, this status allows you to say, yes, there's a problem here, I'm going to fix it, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, and that gets it out of your review queue so that you can move on with your deployment. Moving on to Java, um, we've added some additional rules for XML. So not all XML processing vulnerabilities are about XXE. Um, for instance, if you didn't already know that the Java XML Digital Signature API doesn't use strong signature validation by default, then you could look at this code all day long and never realize there was a problem here. So for that, we've added um, four new XML processing rules to help you find these maybe less obvious XML processing vulnerabilities. Along similar lines, in commercial editions, we've added additional taint analysis vulnerabilities for some of the less prominent types of um, vulnerability uh, with user-provided code. So this particular vulnerability that I'm showing you is about reflection, um, and it's reflection with user-provided data. So as a review, what taint analysis does is start from where you get data from the user. Anytime you get data from the user, you have to assume that it can't be trusted. Maybe it can, maybe it can't, but you need to assume that you shouldn't trust it. And it's going to follow that user-provided data through the control flow from method to method, from file to file, to where that user-provided data is used in unsafe ways. So. The other neat thing about this particular vulnerability is that there are multiple paths through the code that can get you to this same unsafe usage. And we can see those here in the left pane. So this first one that we started with has 21 steps to get to the problematic usage. This one's a little bit shorter, but again, it goes from method to method and file to file to help you trace where the untrusted user input comes in and where it's used in an unsafe manner. Moving on from that, um, there's another feature that we've added to taint analysis. Um, so with 9.4, we've done an effort to analyze the source code of 10 major libraries slash dependencies 
and we fed the resulting data into analysis so that ships with 9.4 and it's going to enrich your TAIN analysis if you're using these 10 libraries so that you can start to pick up vulnerabilities that might have been missed before. So an example of one, and this is some sample data so it's a little bit contrived, um, but we're getting user data through a dependency um, that we previously would have missed. Then we pass it in in the code here in the main application. It goes through a pass through in a dependency. Um, again, it might have we might have lost track of it previously at this point. Then we pass it around some more within this code, and then here's a, a sync in a dependency. So again, we have analyzed ten major popular dependencies fed that code into your analysis and so with 9.4 you may see additional TAIN analysis vulnerabilities raised that weren't raised before because basically we've made the rules smarter. Still on Java, um, I think anyone who analyzes Java is going to be happy to see this because we have made your analysis faster. In our test, the, the changes that we did were up to 67 percent faster across the projects that we tested. Larger projects see a greater impact on this. Your bigger projects get a, a bigger boost in performance and small projects may not see much of an improvement at all. But on average we saw a 30 percent increase in performance of the Java sensor, so the Java portion of analysis um, with these improvements. What we've done is group the processing of related files together. So we get this performance boost with no impact on accuracy. Similarly, in commercial editions, we've improved the speed of PR analysis as well, another, another 8 to 25 percent on top of the average 30 percent in overall analysis. And the way we've gotten this PR analysis speed boost is that we've changed what we're analyzing. So previously we were running full analysis on all the files and then narrowing what we reported to what was related to the PR. Now we're only going to run full analysis on the files changed in the PR and on the files that weren't changed in the PR we're only running the rules that can be affected by changes in other files. So again if you're, if you're running Java analysis you're going to get your results faster and I think everybody likes that. Moving on to C and C++ We've improved compiler support across a number of different compilers. So we've added a whole bunch of flag supports um, and some other precision uh, improvements. So across MSVC, DAB, ARMCC, Texas Instruments, GLANG, and IAR. I'll give a little pause here so you can scan for your flag. And in addition, we've improved our handling of headers. So previously, we were treating all headers like system headers, so like system provided libraries. We weren't doing a, a full analysis. We weren't doing an analysis of the code of headers. Now we've segregated out user provided headers and we are analyzing that code. And what that's done is eliminate a number of false negatives as well as a few false positives. And here is an example of an issue in a user provided header that we weren't previously finding um, and now in 9.4 we do find. Moving on from CNC++ into the realm of reporting in Enterprise Edition and above uh, we have added support for the OWASP Top 10 2021 report. The OWASP group released OWASP Top 10 2021 in late September and now here in 9.4 you have the report to reflect uh, your code status against the OWASP Top 10 2021. It's here in the UI and it's also in the security report PDF. And speaking of PDFs, we have also updated the portfolio PDF to show new code. So previously we had been showing developers new code. First we made new code values visible in the UI, then we made them dominant in the UI, what you see by default. Then in 9.3 we updated the portfolio interface to make new code values available in addition to the overall code values that we've always shown. And now in 9.4 we've finished the job by bringing new code values to the portfolio PDF. So you see that here on the main overview page with the new code values here on the left 
and and at the domain level we have new code values in addition to the overall code values and that's what I wanted to show you today thanks for watching I'll see you next time